What's up guys? I hope that you're well. Figured it was about time that I did a video on lockdown, especially after the ESFP sketch in my last personality skit video, which seemed to make some of you question whether or not I'm doing okay in lockdown. Rest assured, I am fine. You guys are the absolute sweetest. But before we launch into that, I'm just chuffed to talk to you today about the sponsor of today's video, Voss Health, who you guys might remember from my MBTI mental health video. Voss is a new app for mental health that is available worldwide in over eight different languages. It was developed with the help of mental health professionals and is a complex tool which will help you increase productivity, feel better, and get in touch with your inner self. But wait, Voss has two new exciting features on the app. The first of which is Wellbeing Reports, which contains standardized scientific questionnaires, which help you to understand when you should seek help in order to prevent mental health problems. Now there are specifically two questionnaires, which are the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Questionnaire and the Satisfaction with Life Scale. The second new feature offers a chance to talk to a Voss advisor about anything that might be troubling you, whether it's relationship problems, work stress, negative thoughts and emotions, or just any tough situation situations that you might be struggling with in life. I have to say that I've been immensely impressed with this app and I'm super proud to be endorsing it on this channel. So head down to the link in my description to check out more and thank you to Voss Health for sponsoring this video. You guys are great. Now let's get straight to it. Context. Australia is in a nationwide lockdown at the moment and my particular city has been in lockdown for 10 weeks. I understand we've all had to go through lockdowns and it's been a tough year and a half for all of us. I've learned so much about myself. So I figured it's an opportunity to share those lessons that I've learned about myself, being an ESFP, specifically what I've learned about myself through the lens of understanding that I'm an ESFP and understanding that I use the cognitive functions that I do. I've always been interested in learning about typology and all the different types and the different functions. So it's been fascinating to learn how my brain and how my personality responds to being in these extended lockdowns. And naturally, because I'm an open book, I wanna share my insights with you guys and also open the floor for a conversation, classic, about lockdown and what type you guys are and what worked for you and what you learned about yourself in lockdown slash are learning about yourself in lockdown and your coping mechanisms for lockdown. Disclaimer, I am not a psychologist. I just have an interest in MBTI, in self-development and particularly in the Jungian eight cognitive functions model. Now I don't have a script for a lot of this video. I've just got a few dot points and it's funny because the dot point that that's next in line here says authentic monologue about how hard lockdown is. <laughs> Such an FI video that I'm doing right now. So presenting to you a case study on the ESFP in lockdown. The first thing that I've learned is that we use extroverted sensing as our dominant cognitive function. Well, that's not what I've learned. What I've learned is that we really get drained from not having brand new stimuli, sensory stimuli to interact with which to interact every day. The fact that I'm getting up every day and I'm interacting with the same sensory stimuli because I'm not allowed to leave my house or my area like at this point one of our rules in my city is that we're not allowed to exercise for longer than an hour so basically it means that that hour is me going outside and being like what new pathway can i choose today what new area can i explore my housemates are probably watching this and being like yo you don't go outside Kristen. it's because i don't have the energy to so because i'm limited to interacting with only the sensory stimuli that I am used to and see every day. I'm not having that variety that SE craves of physical experience. I'm not having adventure. I'm not having exploration of the world. And what that has ended up doing over time is um, really making me feel like there's nothing to get up in the morning for. That sounds pretty dark, but I mean, it's just the reality and I'm happy to share that because I feel like you guys probably all relate to that in some regard. This was something I wasn't necessarily realizing immediately. Um, I do have three housemates and it's been fantastic interacting with them. But after about the fifth week, the lack of variety started to really get to me and it was so clear that what I was craving was going out into the world and adventuring. And I know that because the few times where I've got to leave my house, whether it be for doctor's appointments or, um, you know, I went, I went 30 minutes away in a car to get a new phone, which was 
one of the greatest excursions I've had. I always come back from those excursions feeling energized and ready to take on the rest of the day and my energy levels have gone up and I'm just a better, like a more pleasant person, more talkative, more myself. The people in my life have been fantastic. You know, we, we all love MBTI in this house and they've been trying to really give me new experiences and we've been brainstorming ways that we can feed each other's dominant functions still in this lockdown. Given that I'm determined to feel my feelings and to learn about myself, but also to improve myself and to be a better person and a more um, pleasant person for the people around me. After my main crash, which was two weeks ago, where I was sort of crying every day, I really struggled to get out of bed. I was rising on an average like at 10 a.m., which is like quite late for me. And I was starting to cry without even knowing why or without even having control of when the tears came. And usually I'm quite good at that. I'm usually really quite good at removing myself from a situation if I need to cry or if I need to work through a feeling or something, process a feeling. Uh, I was starting to lose control over those kinds of things and I was like, okay, something's slipping away from me here and I was able to recognize the mental health, like slight decline and that it was the tipping point for something much worse, you know, a downhill that could be much worse. So I was determined to sort of finding coping, me coping mechanisms and re being able to recognize that it was because my SE wasn't getting fed. I flagged it with my housemates and we started to brainstorm ways in which we could, you know, improve the SE experience. <laughs> with that in mind, a few tips if anyone's an SE user in lockdown, things that I've done in lockdown that have been super helpful. Indoor picnics, I organized one indoor picnic for us and it was really great. We sat down and we played Jackbox. That's a fantastic game and it's quite exciting. I think for any personality type. And we put up fairy lights and we had wine and cheese and we um, ended up having a really nice chat late into the night and it was just fantastic. We also got a fire pit and built a fire outside, um, which we've done a few times and ordered pizza, roasted mars marshmallows, had hot chocolate, have had lots of deep discussions out there. It's been awesome. We are currently in the process of doing a puzzle, which I'm a massive fan of. Other things that we've done is now hear me out, this may sound cheesy, but rock painting. A friend bought that for me as a KK present one year and we all laughed, but <laughs> who's laughing now because that has been a savior. That was an excellent outlet for my creativity for that day and I did it with my housemate and we had a lot of fun, so I can recommend rock painting. And we've also just bought a inflatable pool, which now that it's heading into summer in Australia, we're gonna whip that out and it's gonna be great. The next thing that I've learned about being an ESFP in lockdown is that because the lack of new sensory stimuli can inevitably make us feel like we're not able to explore or experience new things, therefore making us feel stifled and trapped, boundaries are more important than ever because ESFPs do not like to feel trapped or stifled in any way or that people are in their space or that they don't have their own space especially and I'm sure all types are like this in their own way when they're feeling trapped they need to feel like they have their own space to recluse to even though they're extroverts now prior to lockdown I had an open door policy with my housemates and I never really minded that you know um, they would come into my room. It was very clear that I like spending time with them because they're like my best friends as well. I didn't really mind if they entered my space because I was getting so much energy from being out in the world like most of my day anyway. But I'm shocked at how much this has changed in lockdown. In this lockdown, suddenly it has become to me more important than ever that I can be assured no one is gonna enter my space. And that's because, you know, I'm struggling. I need that time to sit and reflect and be by myself and work through my own feelings and, you know, the tumultuous thoughts and emotions that I'm going through at the moment. Now, because I'm a people pleaser, I was not communicating this boundary to my housemates for like the first like six weeks of lockdown. And what ended up happening is I ended up feeling more stifled and trapped. I thought it was just lockdown itself, but I realized that once I externally processed and TE'd, for lack of a better term, my boundaries to my housemates. Not only was I realizing how much I cared about them, but in classic TE style, I realized as I was externally processing how much I cared about it and what exactly was bothering me and was able to really flesh it out with my fellow housemates in a way that was just real, authentic, blunt, and I felt so much better after it. So as an ESFP, and I've known this, but like, 
really have realized it in the last two weeks, you need to communicate your needs to people. You know what? I'm not, I'm gonna scratch as an ESFP. As a human, you need to communicate your feelings and thoughts and needs to people. People aren't mind readers. Now to nuance this a little bit more as an ESFP, because I feel like our FI second function values authenticity is really important for us to feel like our emotions and feelings and thoughts are understood and validated so give the people with whom you live an opportunity to do that for you and i'm not just talking about the people who you live with of course just the people in your life the friends people who are reaching out to you in lockdown if you feel like you need to have boundaries set in place there verbalize them they can't read your mind the next thing i've learned about being an esfp in lockdown is that as the time of lockdown has extended my time that i need to spend in self-reflection has needed to increase as well i like to think i'm generally pretty good at making time for introspection and self-reflection but as this lockdown started to like cave in on me i realized that i was that my inner peace was starting to disappear because there was the simultaneous feeling of entrapment and also the fact that i had my regular workload but that my energy was decreasing and being lower but i was keeping the same workload so i was trying to meet those standards that i usually had for myself outside of lockdown but I I didn't have the same energy anymore and so what was usually taking me like a few hours would take me like a whole day because of my lack of energy and so I was spending as much time on work but then I was also feeling trapped and what ended up happening was I didn't spend time to proportionally sit with those new feelings of entrapment and work through them and processing feelings is important we love that on this channel so to just keep going with all my life commitments at the same regular pace pace was just not working for me. I've realized that when I can't feed that SE, the next best thing is to feed the FI. Because if you're not spending time in those two functions in a healthy way, you are gonna generally feel less energized and more drained and just probably less happy. A huge lesson has been in my people pleasing and how I need to really put myself first sometimes and put those boundaries in place. And that's just one of the many lessons I've learned about myself. So the advice that I would have given an ESFP in like weeks one to five of lockdown is very different from the advice that I would give that same person now in week 10 of lockdown. At the beginning, I was like, force yourself to get out of bed by a certain hour, go for a walk, make a coffee, Cross three tasks off your list by midday. One small one, one that's got to do with one of your passions or some other form of self-expression, and one that's building towards a future goal. That way you've utilized S, E, F, I, T, E, and N, I, and you've made all functions happy by midday. But my advice now would simply just be to survive. Do whatever it takes and what you need to do for yourself to survive, to just make it through the day. Because if you get through a day and you say, hey, that was just an okay day, that's great for lockdown. No one's expecting you to have the best time of your life in lockdown and it's okay to struggle. And it's okay to feel like you are struggling to get out of bed in the morning. And it's okay if you feel like you can't be as good a friend as you usually are to the people in your life. If you're doing okay, you're doing great for lockdown. Which leads me into my general tips for lockdown, if you guys are interested. <laughs> First tip. Those expectations that you had of your friends prior to lockdown, lower them, drop them and just extend grace instead. It's hard enough to be motivated to do even just a little bit of work in lockdown. It's hard enough to be motivated to do your laundry in lockdown. You don't know what other people are going through. So try not to expect that your friends are gonna be there for you in the same way that they were prior to lockdown. Each person is going through their own crisis and giving each other space is the right thing to do. And in the same vein, if you feel like you aren't being there for your friends in the same way you once were, we all understand that it's hard for you and your friends are gonna understand that as well. So try not to be so hard on yourself. On the flip side, Second tip is if you do have those days where you happen to be doing okay, great even, and those days will probably be sporadic and unpredictable, then you're having a good day for lockdown. So when you're done using that energy for the things that you need to do for you to survive, use that energy when it does come and try to reach out to someone. Although we do need to cut each other some slack, we also need to accept the reality that at the end of the day, we are all relational beings and we are all going to feel better if we feel that sense of community, support and love in whatever shape that takes on. And my third tip is 
communication. And this goes for literally every single one of you, not just in lockdown, actually, just in life. At the beginning of lockdown, when I was really struggling with my own stuff, which I've already gone into, I started to get really snappy with my housemates. And that was the first sign that I needed to make a change. And that was because I was expecting just under the circumstances, irrational as it is, I was somehow expecting that my housemates would be able to like read my mind about what I was going through. Never mind the fact that they were also going through their own stuff. And given the circumstances, it got into this weird territory of things that would usually not bother me about my housemates started to bother me. And I felt like vice versa. And I'll use my ISTJ housemate as an example. And I flagged this with her. <laughs> she uses SI as her first function, I use SE. And you can just imagine how that would play out in the household. You know, I need that exploration, freedom and um, unpredictability, spontaneity. And she has very specific structures and orders that she likes to upkeep in the sensory world. Both, both of those functions operate in the sensory world. So there was some tension at some points as we started going to getting into the really tough middle ground of lockdown. And I suddenly felt like I really wasn't understanding her and I suddenly felt like she was really not understanding me. And things that just would never have usually got to me were getting to me just because I'm human and we were around each other 24 hours a day. And there's this weird people pleasing part of my brain that was like, no, don't flag this with her. Like, it's not her fault that this is the things that she cares about. But then when I started to notice that there was a difference in the way that I was feeling and that I was starting to like snap at her a little bit, I was like, something needs to change. I always talk about communication, open communication. So I need to sit down and chat with her. Lockdown sort of makes us feel sometimes like the people around us don't have our best intentions at heart, but Literally everything I know about my housemate is that she is so loving, loves me so much and cares about me so much. So I think a huge thing in lockdown that we need to do as humans is just assume that everyone is operating out of love and good intentions and doing the best that they can a lot of the time to love us well and to give us space and to give us what we need in lockdown. And remember that people are not mind readers. She was never going to understand that I was struggling with the kinds of things that I was unless I communicated them to her. To expect that she was reading my mind was just ludicrous. So I was like, hey, we love each other. We understand that we're both struggling at the moment. We want to do what we can, whatever is in our power to make the lockdown experience better for each other. She's not a mind reader, so let's sit down and talk about it. And so we sat down and chatted and as expected, it was all fine. We understood each other a lot more after that. All tension was gone and lockdown has just got a lot better for me ever since I felt like the people around me understand me and have validated me and we can work together to creating a shared space in which we're all getting what we need. So, lockdown. <sighs> She's a beast. She's a wild beast. She's an unknown beast. But we just have to navigate it how we can and we have to accept the awesome reality that we as humans are flawed but we are also insanely strong when lifted up by people around us and we are super adaptable and we are super resilient we just have to take the time to get to know ourselves and to feed our cognitive functions <laughs> and to just love others in the way they need to be loved but to love ourselves so i'll just leave you with Lockdown is hard. I know it's hard for you. I know even if you're out of lockdown, this time is just ridiculously hard. And if you're just making it through the day, you're doing great. So I wanna affirm you for that and encourage you to keep on keeping on. Because the fact that you're watching this video is really cool and a huge testament to the fact that you wanna learn and grow as an individual. So good on you. Do what you need to do to make it through crack open a puzzle. You won't regret it. If you do, let me know in the comments. I'm immensely grateful for you. And it's so cool that I get to discuss these things on this platform. And um, I should mention that YouTube has really kept me going in lockdown. It's so cool that I can do what I do. So please let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments and please let me know any tips in the comments as well for other people who are of the same type as you and any you know, particularly awesome ideas you've had in lockdown and awesome activities you've been doing that other SE users or people in general can do in lockdown to keep optimistic and safe and happy and healthy. Thank you for watching this video, guys. And thank you so much again to Voss Health for sponsoring it. And I will see you guys later. Bye.